tracheostomy. We all know that a surgical opening made in the trachea is tracheostomy. Why is it very important to know about the care is because we do a breach of the uh, usual nature's physiology in the airway to make our lives easier or is the patient comfortable. So that is what we are going to discuss today. So tracheostomies can be elective or emergent. So most common uh, situation or cause in which uh, we use or uh, we put the patient on tracheostomy is a prolonged ventilation. When the patient is going to be on ventilator for quite some time, it will not be comfortable uh, to continue on the endotracheal tube and uh, difficulty in weaning of ventilation is uh, going to be the next common cause in a CCU uh, for uh, uh, putting a patient on tracheostomy. So uh, there are various techniques in which we do a tracheostomy. Tracheostomy can be surgical or percutaneous. So surgical tracheostomy, is, as we know, is done in the OT or bedside by the ENT surgeons or neurosurgeons. So that is a very different technique. And percutaneous is done uh, mostly by the intensivist in the bedside. So that is a uh, a needle and wire technique okay so that is the clinician's disc uh, discretion on how what technique it depends on individual patient variability so uh so just uh touch on the la laryngeal anatomy we can see here uh, i hope the image is clear so we have the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid and between that there is a cricothyroid membrane in which uh, we do the cricothyroidotomy that is an emergency airway procedure then there is a uh, you can see below the cricoid, there are the tracheal rings one, two, three, and four. So between the first and second tracheal rings, we do the percutaneous tracheostomy. Okay. And the surgical tracheostomy is usually done between the second and third. It is a little lower down. So these are the methods I was referring. Surgical and percutaneous dilatational tracheostomy are two different uh, techniques uh, which can be done on um, the patients. So surgical, there is... Uh, cutting and uh, retracting of muscles, but in um, bedside percutaneous dilatation under bronchoscopic uh, guidance, we can do a needle and a wire technique and it is mostly dilatation. We don't cut the muscles. We just use dilators to sequentially dilate the trachea and pass in the tracheostomy tube. So this is a bit on the techniques. Okay. So what are the parts of the tracheostomy tube? We need to know this because we are going to use these terms again and again. So we must be well versed with these uh, tracheostomy tube uh, parts. So that is a uh, distal tip and a, a proximal tip. Uh, so this is uh, the distal tip which goes inside the patient uh, trachea. It's going to be uh, there and the cuff makes it uh, snugly fitting into the trachea. There is a shaft and flange. This is what we see outside. This is the flange and the tracheostomy tube connector, 15 millimeter connect okay this is a fixed size in all adult uh, or uh, pediatric tubes 15 millimeter connector okay so there is also a uh, cuff is inflated by using a pilot balloon which has a one way valve so there is also a, a, a locker which just closes and uh, just prevents the air from escaping from this one way valve also if it is loose so this these are the parts of the tracheostomy tube okay so um, what are the types of cuffs we need to know about the type of cuffs because uh, initially there were low volume and high pressure cuffs used. And later they found out that because of the low volume and high pressure, there is a lot of tracheal uh, mucosal necrosis and uh, uh, low blood flow causing a lot of stenosis. So they found out something like uh, a large volume, low pressure cuff. So this is how it looks like. So trachea. Okay. So there is a tube. This is a high pressure cuff with a low volume, we can see how much of pressure it is uh, uh, transmitting over the tracheal mucosa, causing low blood flow, uh, necrosis and mucosal injury. Whereas in the low pressure cuff, there is a, 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 a spread of pressure along the tracheal walls and it is like there is not much of a pressure directly on the mucosa causing low blood, blood supply or necrosis.